the capacity to trust or be trusted. That's the conversation we're going to have here today on Relationship Thursday. How you guys doing? This is Ron Simplify Myers, author, podcaster, and your uplifting life partner. This is a conversation I was having with a good friend of mine. Uh, we we're talking about trust in relationships. And I've had people to tell me, well, I just, I just don't have trust. Well, we all do. Think about it. If you didn't trust that your car would start, then chances are you wouldn't get in the car. If you didn't trust that a chair would actually hold you, then you wouldn't actually sit down in the chair. Um, and I know those are, are real simple uh, illustrations, but the reality is we have trust. We all do. The challenge is what do you trust in? Or is it people that you lack trust in? One of the things that I've, I've come to learn is that, and that's really what this is all about, is that if you're a person that does not trust people, the reality is you are a person who cannot be trusted. Now, don't get mad at me because I know some people here and they go, what do you mean? You know, you know people out here, they're, they're, you know, they're liars, they're cheaters, and they just can't be trusted. Well, that's probably because you can't be trusted. And here's why I say that. Um, if you believe you're ever in a situation where you think for a second there's an opportunity for someone to take advantage of you, to burn you, uh, to get the upper hand on you, whatever way you like to uh, illustrate, I mean, to, to, to take that vision in, you will make sure that you jump first or you take steps first to block them from ever doing that. And what you're actually doing is you're accusing them of doing things that they haven't done. They may not have ever thought about doing. They may not even be capable of doing. But because your thought is they can't be trusted, you're going to act on your thoughts and you're going to go do things that you actually end up burning them or create a lack of trust in you because of the actions that you took. Does that make sense? Uh, you guys have heard me use the illustration if you're going up a hill. You just have to trust that the people that are coming down the hill will commit to their side of the road, or you can never make it up the hill. And that's the same thing in life, is that you have to take the experiences from the past, because that's what they are, their experiences from the past. And you'll know if they're in the past by how you're currently living. Because if all your decisions are based on what happened in the past, then they're not in the past. They're in the present. And they're actually affecting your future. Because every decision you make from past experiences, but they're actually dictating your future uh, steps. And that's the reason we always hear you have to be able to close the door from the past. That's why. Because if you don't, the past will stay your present and it will keep making your future decisions. Now, to add a little twist to this conversation, we have to think about the fact that some people are in a position where they're not even capable of trusting. And therefore, they're a person that you probably, unless you really want to put the work and effort in, are people you need to stay out of an actual intimate relationship. Now, if you want to be there to help them, coach them, and get them through it, that's one thing, but not to get into an intimate relationship. I remember I used to tell uh, some family members that um, that because they always wanted to get in relationships with, with guys because they wanted to help them. And I said, heal them from a distance. <laughs> don't, don't heal them as your partner. I said, once they get their stuff together, I mean, and again, folks, we know we're not talking about anybody that's going to be totally uh, without looking to grow or, or, or expand in their uh, areas of life. But I'm talking about the red flags. If you want to stay there and help them through those things, that's cool. But don't get in a relationship with them because then you're going to complain about their red flags and why they do this and why they do that. You shouldn't have got in an intimate relationship with them and people do it all the time. And I just shake my head. I say, why did you sign up for that? So, but anyway, you have to be able to come to grips with a person not being capable 
because of things in the past, because they haven't gotten through the healing, and this could hold true for you, but they're not capable at this point. Now, I understand that we're what we're all capable of doing and what we do are two different things. We're all capable of trusting. We're all capable of overcoming all the illnesses as far as the mental, as far as the way we deal with people. We can overcome those. We can adjust to everything. The question is whether we want to or whether we believe we actually can. Because you guys hear me say all the time, it's all about the stories. If you're willing to step back and change the stories, then you can change the way you feel and then change your actions. But at the same time, a person who hasn't made the conscious decision to do that, at this point, they're not capable of it. I remember uh, at an event, a guy talked about that. He was saying... This young lady wasn't getting it when the guy said, because she was basically saying she wanted the love from her dad. And her dad just wouldn't give it to her, and she just felt cheated all her life. And it, and here she is, an, uh, an old, you know, not older. She's probably in, her, I think, her early 30s or something. But bottom line is she's still going through challenges because she's still trying to get her dad's love. And he was telling her that he's not capable at this time and again this is kind of what we we're talking about before what we can do but what the mental block is are two different things and so what he did to illustrate to her he said come here on stage and he had her come up on stage and he told her he said what i want you to do is i want you to go over there and i want you to hug the lamp that was on the stage and so she went and hugged the lamp and he said okay he said now i want the lamp to hug you back and so she kind of looked she was like what do you mean he said, we're going to stay here and we're going to wait for the lamp to hug you back. And she was like, well, the lamp is not capable of doing that. He said, exactly. That's where your dad is. Your dad is the lamp. And so that's what I'm getting to when I'm saying a person is may be at a point where at this point in their li life, they're not capable of trusting. And so unless they're willing to go and take that effort and the steps in order to, uh, to, to, to to change that thought process, I would tell you it's probably a safe bet that you should probably stay definitely out of an intimate relationship with them or you're setting yourself up for a lot of hurt and a lot of pain because the reality is if they're not capable of it and it's something that you want, then you're going to be in trouble. I was just having this uh, conversation, matter of fact, um, with one of the young men that I, that I talked to and you know, he's, he's like family now, but we're talking about um, the significance about wanting to be significant. And the more that we talked and we had the conversation, we came to understand that, you know, he's always talked about significance being a major part in his life. But more recently it actually hit like with him and I really talking for both of us to really see where the issues really were, and it, it had to do with um, probably the, the, the childhood issues of not feeling um, the significance from parents. And you guys will find out, and, and most issues that people have, if you back it up, it's almost always, almost always, almost always <laughs> from childhood it had to do with parents. And... That's why we said people really don't under our parents really don't understand the significance and the roles that they play in the life of their children, and and not just parents, anyone that's in that that um, position where you're the person who's overseeing others and you're their guidance. That impact is so so critical to the way that they feel about themselves, and again, as we know. It doesn't mean they can't change it because they can, but it does create a stumbling block. And that's why you see uh, people that come from uh, homes where the parents had a great relationship. Those are usually people that get into relationships and they last a long time, the relationships that they get in, because they have an example of what it looks like. And then at the same time, those that didn't get that, actually usually have those same issues in their relationship. It take a conscious effort. Um, and that's why, again, most people don't realize the school didn't stop once they got out of high school. And it didn't stop even if you went to college after college. 
life will be here forever until the day you leave here. And that's where you need to be doing most of your, your growth, most of your actual education. Uh, you guys see, I got books behind me and, and I'm always grabbing new books and reading new books and stuff. It's because no one has all the answers. And the ideal is to expand while you're here. And that's at least my vision that to get to be a better Ron every day, every chance I get. And so the bottom line, again, for this particular video, or, or conversation, I should say, is to, if you're a person that doesn't trust, look in the mirror and recognize you're also a person who cannot be trusted. Now, I know, again, some of you don't want to hear that, but the reality is it's not possible for you to be a person who doesn't trust others and be a person that can be trusted because you're, again, every situation you're going to be in, you're playing defense. You're protecting yourself because you think the world is out to get you or others are out to get you. It's going to make you make decisions that and, and accuse people mentally of things that they've never done, never thought about. And therefore, you will become a person that can't be trusted, even if that's not your intent. So you got to be willing to give people, um, um, what do we call it? Give them the, uh, a fair shake or, um, oh man, I forgot what, what the word was I was thinking, but anyway, it'll come to me, but you got to be able to just say, we're going to trust that people have great character and integrity. It doesn't mean going to it unwise and not watching because like you guys know, I always say people are not hard to figure out. And the better you get at learning the stuff that I'm sharing and others are sharing, and hopefully you're continuing to expand and grab from, uh, from all areas around you, the better you get at understanding the people. It's good and bad. It's good because you're not going to waste time with people. Why? Because you pick up on their issues very, very quickly. And it's not a judging. It's not a bad thing. It's just you can see very quickly where people are struggling at. And then because you understand this, you get to decide very quickly, is this a path that I want to get involved in? Do I want to sit here when I see the issues that this person has? Uh, the same thing I was sharing uh, in the car the other day when I was uh, talking to a young lady talking about all men are no good. And I said, think about it. With that thought process, the men that are good, and I told her, I believe I'm a great guy. But understand the moment I hear that conversation from you, you're not a person that I want to uh, try to get in a relationship with. Why? Because a person who has their stuff together or moving in that direction at least, they're not going to get in a relationship with someone that they're going to have to convince that they're a good person because you've already made the decision that the person you're going in a relationship because he's a man He's bad. He can't be trusted, kind of what we're talking about. Why would I walk into a relationship like that where I already know anything that I do, I'm being, you know, I'm a suspect that I'm doing something wrong. If I don't call you when you thought I should call you, if I don't show up at a time you think I should, our whole relationship is going to be built on the fact that I have to keep defending to get you to believe that I'm a good guy. Or I have to keep buying you stuff. Or I have to keep, you know, you guys know what I'm talking about. I got to keep trying to prove to you. Folks, that's too much work. So bottom line is like I told her. The guys that are good guys, the moment they hear you say that, they're not going to give you the time of day because you're too much work. So what happens is you're going to end up with the guys that you're talking about, which is the guys that you can't trust. But why did that occur? Because the fact is, you don't trust. You think everybody's bad, or in this case, men. And therefore, because you're putting those vibes and that conversation out there, the people that are good and got their stuff together don't trust you. So work on your trust issues. If that is a concern for you, learn how to give people the benefit of the doubt. And again, I'm not saying, and that's what I was when, it, when I went blank there for a second, that's what I was talking about, giving people the benefit of the doubt. That's, that's what it was when I was saying the word. But anyway, 
you got to be willing to allow people to be themselves. And, and again, the more information you get, it's not that you have to spend, like when people say you got to spend so much time with people to get to know them. No, you don't. You got to get good at knowing you and learning the stuff that we're talking about on Self Love Monday and then the stuff that we're talking about on Relationship Thursday. And like I said, grabbing information from other people. The better you get at this stuff, and again, truly understanding people, it doesn't take long. And again, that's why I said it's good and bad. It's good, it's, it's bad because of the fact that you may stay single for a little bit because the fact is you become maybe a little too picky. And, and by that, for me, and, and by too picky is you start letting the little things get in the way. Again, if it's not the red flags, we got to breathe a little bit, and I'm guilty of it. If it's not the red flags, understand you are not going to see eye to eye with everyone, and you wouldn't even want to be in a relationship like that. That would be a boring relationship. So the reality is don't hold people to such standards. Like we said, when you make that list and you're checking to see you got 50 things on the list and you're trying to see if they fit all 50 folks. If it's not the red flags we can work through the other stuff. But understand, trust is at the top of that red flag area because without trust, you don't have a relationship. And as you guys know, it ain't right, it ain't wrong. It is my opinion. Now, I look forward to talking to you guys on um, Monday, on Self Love Monday. And if you haven't had the opportunity, run over to ronsimplifiedmyers.online. Again, that's ronsimplifiedmyers.online. Check out all the things that I got going on. And folks, if you're not having fun, you know what? You should be doing something else. But anyway, work on your trust issues if you have them. And then learn to give people the benefit of the doubt. And let them decide whether they're in the game or out of the game by the way that they, that they behave and not by you prejudging because you don't trust. I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.